Fill her up. You're listening to the Gas Digital Network. When I see the sun, I go, oh, oh, oh. I don't ever want to miss this. Because in my heart, I know what this is. This is what dreams are made of. Hey now, hey now. This is what dreams are made of. I've got somewhere I belong. I've got somebody to love. This is what dreams are made of. Hey now, hey now. (laughs) Everybody and welcome to another episode of Bra Motherfucking Topics. I'm your host Kim Congdon here with my co-host Alex Scarlato, and we have a very special guest with us. Oh here today. my gosh, we're so excited! This guy, he's been with us for years. He's our love, our heart, our soul. It's Mike Harrington. Yeah, woo, yeah. Wow, <laughs> Harrington. I'm very special. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. I mean, it literally, it only took me bullying my way onto the show uh, because Alex threatened to have Paco on, somebody who she's known for all of three weeks. I thought I'd give him a fair shot since we called him a rapist on air. <laughs> I was like, Paco's only getting the rape episode. He's not getting two episodes Dude. where he's the good guy. He's taking our pictures <laughs> like, here, like, so here, politely right now. He's <laughs> right here. He's, he's in the so- room. You know, uh, ever since our Paco raped a girl episode, um, <laughs> I've become friends with Paco because his reaction, he really was able to handle us talking that kind of shit, and I respect it. Yeah. Yeah, you did good, Paco. Not that you raped her, you, you know? You done well. I thought you were going to punish us for it, like maybe with a rape, but you didn't. I didn't get raped since last week by Paco personally. That's all I know. I feel like I was emotionally raped. He called me in here earlier. First of all, I thought it was Joey's voice. Which was already scary. I was like, uh, you know, when they write like short stories and horror films where it's like, I heard my mother's voice in the kitchen. Then my mother was upstairs. That happened. I heard like, I thought it was Joey saying, hey, can I get you for a second, Kim? So I came in here and it was Paco with no socks on his feet. He's sockless and he's I didn't notice that. Full, until he's, right now. he's a photographer. He's fully barefoot. We've talked about this before. Barefoot men. It's offensive. It's offensive. Yeah. Paco, you don't have to hide them. We they are they're already out. Now no, you have let to embrace me see, them. Let me see those. Toes. They're not they're not ugly feet. They're actually not ugly. What do you think, Harry? Put those tootsies up. Let's see those tootsies. Come on. Paco. Paco, what are you doing? Listen, we'll take into consideration that you haven't cut your toenails. They're not bad feet. Uh, yeah, if you cut them. If you cut the toenails, they're fine. Is it crazy to me that I would know that he's Asian? If By I his just feet? saw his feet, I would know those are Asian feet. He absolutely has Asian feet. You I'm know sorry, why? Guys, my pizza might be here. Talk about his Asian that's a, feet. That's a fun segment for you guys, just pulling up uh, pictures of people's of feet races. and guessing the ethnicity. Oh, uh, we should. I mean, that's a segment we could probably oh, uh, do uh, right uh, now. Foot race? Well, I mean, Francis can just look up a different a race and pull up foot race. Thank you. I was like, what the fuck? That's a great segment name and you gave that nothing. It took me a second. I was like, yeah. And then I was like, oh yeah. <laughs> what are we talking I'm on a, about? I'm here? on a delay. It's bonkers. <laughs> um, he could pull up different races of feet and then we can guess. Yeah. Yeah, we yeah, have no, to I'm do that certain, right now. I'm certain that I would know. I mean, it's like, it's annoying because like, it's there's only a certain range that we could guess within because black feet are gonna look like black feet every but time. What oh, kind of oh. black feet? Black feet could be Dominican feet. They could be Puerto Rican feet. I know Puerto Rican female feet when I see them. <laughs> oh, me too. I know a Puerto Rican woman's feet when I see one. Yeah. Um, I feel like you could get tricked. Like I feel like an Indian guy could read black. Yeah, I think an Indian girl might have cute Puerto Rican feet too. Actually. Ooh, okay. Well, we'll let, we'll let Frank find that. But yeah, in the meantime, Paco, I, he was like, can you get me in here? For, can you come in here for a second? And then it was him. And I was like, oh, yeah. Hey, what's up? He was like, can you sit back on that couch? That's what he said. Damn, did you I, got casting no, couch by no, fucking Paco? No context. He's like, can you sit back on the couch? I was like, uh, yeah. And then he started pulling his camera out. And I had to be like, what's this for, Paco? So, 
Paco, for the future, you got to let me know. <laughs> so how far into this process did he tell you you could make between $1,000 and $5,000 a day? <laughs> He's like, I'll actually build this website for you. Um, it's called OnlyFans. They, no. It, it only goes to Europe. But um, but Paco took some pictures of me, and I'm, I hate taking pictures. I don't know why. Why? Uh, that can't be true. I do. <laughs> I hate taking pictures. You're so photogenic. I know I'm not. Here, no, uh, this no. feels like a fish for compliments, <laughs> and I ain't gonna bite, <laughs> dude. I saw the seven that Paco took of me, and I just don't like pictures of myself. I think Paco just can't film Paco either one of you ladies. I think that's it. Cannot take a fucking decent photo of a woman to save his life. He made Harrington look like a model. He made Frank look like he was on the cover of fucking Vogue, and. He, he gets women looking cross-eyed every time, I swear. He, Paco hates women. You heard it here twice. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the lunch that I ordered, it's so it's so big. That's can a I possibly, cartoonish Can order. I possibly eat this on the podcast? Alex I'm so is hungry. so hungry. She, we're going to have to let her eat on this podcast because she's got to get back to work. And if she doesn't get back to work, she gets physically hit. Like I have been, so. I've I've been a day one fan of this podcast. So we're talking. Mike listens every week. I know that. No, I don't. Just I, about. I can't. Here's the problem, right? Every time I try to listen to this show, it gets like 20 minutes in, and I'm like, man, these girls are so funny. I love this show so much. Why don't I listen more? And then Alex just starts assassinating my character out of nowhere. Every episode. Like yo. Every episode that I try to listen to, just out of nowhere, my name gets brought up <laughs> in a very, like, nine times out of ten, it's Kim, like, setting the record straight of Alex making me look like the worst person possible. Also, I'm always on your side. You I don't know if that's true. usually are on my side. Listen, I love that. I let it go today, but I usually do bring you up as part of the ugly feet debate, and and I'm right about that. That I'm he sorry. has ugly feet? You, He's got a, with that toe. I never said that my feet that are beautiful. Toe. I never said that mine are good. I I said that yours are also bad, okay? Mike's got to get between his first and second toe where you could fit a whole other toe. <laughs> He's got a space for a six. Like, it's weird that I don't have six toes. He doesn't have flip-flop feet. Can I see? Yeah. Like, it feet, I understand you what Alex is saying. You can see the gap already. Yeah. You could see it. Look oh at that. Oh my yeah. god. <laughs> yeah, that is. You could park a car gap. in that thing. You could drive a truck through that hey, gap. Blur that out and put it behind a paywall. We're not giving away free content <laughs> on this podcast. Uh, do you think people look for men's feet? Yeah, someone's going to jack off to that. Hard. I do think it's funny that somebody's going to come here. Uh you know, especially you're in the too much content studio, right? You're you're not wearing shoes for this episode. There are going to be some people who click on this hoping for feet. And the fact that they're going to get mine is just hurtful. Mm. I feel bad. Yeah, we should, whenever I put up, um, like, I should put my feet up, but then we should Photoshop yours over it. So even if they think they're getting my feet, it's always yours. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Oh, that'll fuck some people up. Can we go back to what we were talking about um, right before the show started? It was a mind blower to me. Should we see the foot races first? Oh, yeah, I want to see races of feet. Before we move on. Put an Indian man's foot in and hit Google search. I want to see what comes up. First, just for example, Indian man's foot. <laughs> you have too many things. Now, fuck off. That's how. See? You know, I wouldn't I would know. have loved to look at that first picture and guessed where that was from. That, that first picture, I wouldn't have known that was Indian feet, but a few pictures in from there. <laughs> I promise I would have the known that those were Indian feet. The third one, I would have known. Second one. The second one. No, the third one, Based I would Based on the pants. You. I would tell you beyond a shadow of a doubt those are Indian feet. Oh, third one is a no-brainer. So just I think- do other races. See, look, even they, the toes flip up like Indian toes. <laughs> so don't look at the screen anymore. All for right, a couple minutes. Wait, wait, wait. You're you're saying because like the Indian shoes yeah. have like the the you little swirl up in the front. Me. That's a reflection of their upturning toes. Mm. Like you understand me better than most. That's a theory. Do you um, do you want this? I do. I just can't believe I'm doing a podcast, eating and smoking at the same time. No, it's no, not, I know. This is the it's level. Not professional. Like, I've never seen someone do so much. I think Paco just left to go get a gun and kill us. To be fair, um, this is the most anyone has ever done while doing a podcast, and I'm really happy you saved it for the episode that you finally had me on four years in. Yeah, I wanted to be able to give you this amount of my attention. <laughs> it's lovely. You just excited to eat food? I'm just looking at my food. Um, no. Oh, do you have another pair of feet for us, Frank? We'll see some tootsies up there. Oh, yes, I see some. 
Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard. No, no, but we can't see the race or anything. I don't know what race. I didn't see any context. I didn't see any context. Like, why are people taking <laughs> foot photos with flags behind? <laughs> flag with their country's flag. Because he has to look up the race in the foot. Dude, so that's you know, what uh, comes up. If I took a photo of my feet on top of the American flag, <laughs> I could probably sell it to some people. People would be like, this makes sense. This all <laughs> makes sense. Yup, she's from a trailer park. <laughs> uh, oh, man. Um, yeah. Harrington, are you into feet? No, not at all. You don't like like have you ever sucked a toe? Um maybe once. Maybe. You, you barely remember sucking a toe? Yeah. I mean I'm thinking like I I here's the thing. Law of large numbers, like I have to have sucked a toe at one point in my life. It's, it's just He had to say law of large numbers so we know how many girls he's fucked. No. I was gonna say, is uh, the number so large? Chances are like, you had to suck a toe. When you have once. a set of infinity, you're obviously gonna end up with a few toe suckers. It's a game of numbers. I mean I'm sucking every part of a girl's body every night, a different body, different girl. Mm -hmm. Eventually, I'm going to get to one girl, one toe. I mean, toe. a girl's it's, got ten toes, so the law the of odds large are, number. You're going to end up with at least one toe in your mouth. Just saying, infinite monkeys with infinite typewriters. Shakespeare's coming out. You know? uh, you're uh, saying somewhere in the infinite universe, Mike Harrington has sucked a toe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure. I hate that answer. <laughs> it just does nothing for me, though. You know what I mean? Like, the, the concept of, like, while I'm having sex, putting a foot in my mouth is like, what, that's, that sounds as crazy as putting a foot in my mouth at any other point in the day. You know what I mean? Like, that's an insane thing to do. People say it like it's a bad thing to do. You put... Like, I put my foot in my mouth. That's not a thing you're supposed to want to do. Have you ever gotten a foot job, you know, like, where a girl has to really engage her lower abs? Never, never like a serious foot job. I'll tell you right now, I have some deep arches in my feet, and I've getting, I've given more foot jobs than I'm comfortable talking about. I feel as though you probably have a good foot for a job. I have the feet for the job. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think you do. I Can have four different reasons. Oh my God! Uh, races. Of yay. We're gonna come back to the foot for the job, though. No, we can move on from it. I think. No, remind me, Mike. No, because I, I I do have a theory about foot. Look at that there. arch. Yeah, that look, is impressive. Look, she that's could put impressive. a meaty little cock in there. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's it looks like it's doing the Legion of Skanks thing. You could, you could pass me a <laughs> Coke can with hands. those feet. <laughs> You could comfortably move a Coke can from the chair to my hand. Yeah, I got to really force uh, it to get that kind of uh, roundness yeah, in Yeah, that's there, crazy. That shape. That's crazy. You could, <laughs> that, is, that is mandingo sized arches. <laughs> Kim, you were built to give foot jobs. Don't it's be true. ashamed of yourself. I'm, I'm proud. Know. Let's see it, Francis. Oh, um, that is a, that's are, a, no, that's not a French. I'm going to tell you right, I think those might be Italian feet. That might be Italian feet, yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. Uh, those so look similar to my father's toes. Wait a minute. I like this game a lot already. One, this is really fun. And thank you for doing this, Francis, so so quickly. Yeah, Frank, you're a killer. Um, my f um, first and final answer, I'm going with my gut and saying Italian. I'm going to, I'm going to say Spain. Hmm. I'm going to go. We know they're European. We're agreeing they're European feet. Yeah. Hmm. I'm going to say, hmm. yeah, I'm going to say Greek. Ooh, those are all great answers. They're all right in the same area of the world. So we're all saying Mediterranean feet. Are they Mediterranean feet? They are. <gasps> oh, man. Dude, this game is fucking Dude, insane. I knew I could do it. I told you. What variety are they, Frank? They are Greek. Whoa. Oh, shit. Point for Mike. Nice work. Oh, man, this game's great. Do you have another for us? Oh, those wow. look American to me, but um, American? That gets a melting pot, Kim. You yeah, gotta go what? like ethnic background. Yeah, no, they're a little dark, you're right, but it could be a trick. Um those look like Middle Eastern feet to me. Those look like no, I feel like Middle Eastern feet would be a tad bit darker. I think those look like Asian feet. Those Ooh. might be Asian feet. I'm feeling Asian, but I'm feeling... Um, Those look like huge feet to me, though, and I don't know that Asian people generally have huge feet. That's a really good point. I'm not sure if it's a racist thing to say. I don't know what's racist in any climate, but that's been my ob observation, and I'm sticking with it. All right. Um, I'm, all right. Go ahead. I was going to say, I think it's Egyptian. 
Oh, that's a cool. You know what I mean? Like, answer. like it's Middle Eastern, but it is African. African feet. Yeah. Um, it could be. It could be South American feet too. Ooh, good point. Yeah. These could those be look, white could feet. Be, th- that could be soccer player feet. These could be tan white feet, but I think the the I don't know the skin the undertone is wrong for that. I'm going Asia, somewhere in Asia, but I'm going somewhere like um. I'm gonna say these might yeah maybe like South Korean feet. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna go with South Korea. No, I'm gonna say I don't know. A North Korean would never dare take a picture <laughs> like this. No. no, you can't find that on the internet. Oh my god, no! <laughs> they would never pose. They'd like be this. hung by their feet. Just a crop um, photo. I, I would say, sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say, I don't think that culture is repressed enough to be into feet yet. You I know f- what I mean? I feel like Chinese feet would be a little whiter. Yeah. I feel like, I don't know why, I feel like Chinese feet would have those kind of like round toenails like and that. And I think Chinese feet would have a pink undertone. A pink undertone? A pinkish undertone. I'm going to maybe say these might be Chinese feet. I think they are South Korean feet. Or they could be Chinese feet. Um. Okay, I'm gonna go with Chinese feet. No, I'm gonna go with South Korean feet. All right, who was closer? What you, was your guess? I said Egyptian. Egyptian. Those are in fact Italian feet. Ooh, I was closer. Whoa. Those don't look like the Italian feet that I know. I've never seen an Italian foot that looked like that. Wow. I guess you can't get it spot on every time. Does it, do we have a third one that we can maybe redeem ourselves? Because this is like last night. Kim and I were, uh, we had a deck of cards in front of us, and we were trying, we were in front of Becky's husband. I mean, that's very clearly a He's a, a white really man. smart person. He's very smart. He watched us try to um, determine what color card was flipped over by feeling it, feeling its energy with our hands. And um, I don't know why I was just reminded of that. Oh, because we're yeah. trying to guess this. Yeah, w- I was doing really good for like a while, and then I got a few wrong in a row. And he was like, "I told you, it's just going to be fifty fifty if you do it enough times." <laughs> and um, I want to redeem ourselves now. I want to prove that we could do this. We're psychic for feet. Oh wow! Frank's just showing us the whole guy. Wait, we just got to guess what that guy is. Well, I mean, based on the foot, though, the underside of the foot makes it really hard. Those are feet that have been in grass. You think that's a soccer player's foot? Yes. All right. I know a grassy foot when I see one. Yeah, like that's like, I don't know, just American white guy. That's whatever Bruno Mars is, his feet. I'm going to say, really? What is Bruno Mars? I don't know. I feel like he's, isn't he Polynesian? He's like vaguely ambiguously raised. This could be Filipino feet. Ooh. Uh, Oh, that's a fucking Abercrombie model. That is just some white guy. Such a good picture because he's so ambiguous. He's really ambiguous, Frank. You know he how to pick him. He could be white. He could be Asian. I can't tell by the bottom of the foot. I need to see the shape of the nail. What? Oh, he. Oh, he could be Hawaiian. I'm gonna go with Hawaiian or. That's what Paco is. Those might be feet from That's Guam. I don't be- know. Is <laughs> feet the- from Guam. <laughs> <laughs> Those are feet from, they're Filipino or Hawaiian. That's my guesses. I think I think him might be spot on with Hawaiian just because Paco is from Hawaii. So I think Frank might be trying to trick us. That's fair. Yeah. I'm still going with just American white guy. So I don't know what to guess. Like uh, uh, Irish? I don't think those are Irish feet. But Irish? Um. I- Hawaiian. I was gonna. I was going with Kim on this one. That is a Brazilian foot. Oh man, a Brazilian foot. Okay. Wow. Damn. Right. The soccer. This game's tough. I did say it touched grass a lot. I know a grassy foot when I see one. That first one had never touched grass in its damn life. One more ready if you want. Yeah, you did nail it with it. Touch grass. Yeah. Damn. Kim's a little bit psychic. It's true. I can know a foot. <laughs> Which who's <laughs> whose feet are we going with now? Well, these are definitely white people feet. These could be Irish feet. 
Hmm. These could be English feet. The Irish is a great guess. I don't know why they do have orange undertone. <laughs> yeah, I'm going Irish feet on this. Either they're Irish or they have hepatitis. <laughs> they might be a little jaundiced. <laughs> okay, uh, I feel like Frank intentionally didn't put white people in here, so I'm going to guess Puerto Rican. Those are Chinese feet. Oh, oh, I would have never it. guessed that. Chinese feet. I was thinking it, but I had a mouthful of sandwich. So. <laughs> wow, what Damn, a missed dude. opportunity, Alex. I knew that would come back to bite you at some point. Damn it. <laughs> um, All right, you guys, let's take a second because today we're welcoming back IP Vanish to the show. Kim, what is IP Vanish? IP Vanish is a virtual private network, a VPN for short. A VPN is a super important tool that helps you safely browse the internet. What can I use it on, Kim? Well, Alex, you can use a VPN on your computer, tablets, your phones, even things like your Fire Stick when you're streaming media. When you use a VPN, all your data is encrypted. What you're reading, what you're searching, what you're watching, whatever it is you're doing, because that's important. Whatever you're doing on the internet is in my business. It's not anybody else's business. So IP Vanish helps you remain anonymous and secure on the internet. I feel like that's super important these days. How much does it cost, Kimmy? IP Vanish is just three forty nine a month. For just three forty nine a month, twenty seven ninety nine a year, you can help protect your online privacy and security. Here's everything you get with IP Vanish, Alex: anonymous IP addresses, which means your personal IP address can't be tracked by anyone on the web. You can circumvent any online censorship, which means IP Vanish has more than one thousand five hundred servers in seventy plus locations. Get protection when using public Wi-Fi. Remember, with IP Vanish, all your data is encrypted, so no one can snoop on what you're doing. And you get twenty four seven support. You can email, chat with them. You can even call them. They're there to help. If you remember, these guys supported the show a few months ago, and they've come back with an even better deal, wanting to offer something special for the new year. You're getting 65% off now. Alex, did you hear that? Holy motherfucking shit. 65% off. Um, where do I go? How do I, how do I take advantage of this opportunity, Kim? You go to ipvanish.com slash topics, T-O-P-I-X, and claim your 65% savings. Wow. That's the, this is the time to sign up, guys. With that discount and their current promotional offerings, you're going to get a VPN for 65% off their usual offering. IP Vanish is the best of the best, even rated 4.7 out of 5 on Trustpilot, and that's with more than 6,000 reviews. So show these guys some love. They're repeat sponsors. Remember, it's ipvanish.com slash T-O-P-I-X to get this awesome deal and start protecting yourself online today. One more time, that's ipvanish.com slash T-O-P-I-X. That's with a lowercase T, you guys. T-O-P-I-X, all lowercase. All right, let's get back to the show. So before the show, Kim and I, I just can't wait to talk about this. What? What happened? I just, I'm I don't scared. know. I just feel like I wasn't expecting to learn anything new about Harrington because we've been friends for so long. Oh yeah, and he's constantly talking. It's like he's <laughs> an open book. You know everything about him. You know. Yeah. Um. But before the show, we were singing a Hillary Duff song. Yeah. And Mike almost didn't recognize the song, but then when I asked if he'd seen the movie that it came from, he said that his tenth. Maybe. His birthday party that right. he brought his like class to was to go see the Lizzie or his friends, whoever it was, to go see the Lizzie McGuire movie. But he doesn't remember the song. He doesn't even remember the song. It was a very forgettable movie. That movie sucked. Why would you go to see <laughs> what what factored into that choice? Uh, she was hot. Dude, I fucking loved Lizzie McGuire. Yeah, I watched every episode oh, that's of Lizzie cute. McGuire. Yeah. And you found the movie forgettable? Yeah, the movie oh, stunk. The movie was the movie my favorite was so good. episode of Liz of Lizzie McGuire. It was the best one. No, it was trash. It was like it was none of the things. Didn't that her I and liked. Gordo kiss in that one? Yeah, it Dude, was weird. That movie delivered. No, that movie was trash. That yeah. movie almost, almost beats the Aaron Carter episode, but nothing beats the Aaron Carter episode. I don't know, dude. Who? Why? <laughs> no, it's not me. It's me. More pizza? me today. I don't know why. Um, no, I, I mean, the, she got to live her dreams. She got to get on stage as that fucking girl Isabella in the movie. Right. That was dope. Yeah, but she was like living a lie the whole time. I don't know. The whole thing didn't feel very Lizzie McGuire. 
Lucy no. McGuire's whole thing was like, I live my truth, and that's why I'm the coolest. And instead, she pretended to be somebody else, fucking made out with Gordo, something she would never do. It she was, crazy. was in another country. No, nah, what happens? Trash. What happens in Europe stays in Europe. You don't think Lizzie deserves to let loose? Where was she? Where was she? Barcelona? Rome. Yeah, Rome. they were in Italy. Yeah, yeah. Rome. Okay. Anyways, I was just excited that you had your birthday party to see Lizzie McGuire. It wasn't like my birthday party, birthday party. I think we like did like video games or something like that. But I remember I went with like uh, my little brother and some little cousins like on my actual birthday to go see it. Ani. Lizzie McGuire, Aaron Carter episode, or the Hillary, the Lizzie McGuire movie. I feel like I only will choose the movie. Over Pull it down the, a little. I will only choose the movie over the Aaron Carter episode because the movie gave me more joy for longer. Ah. I still quote that movie, and like my friends and I still watch that movie, but. The Aaron Carter episode is just special to me because it's Aaron Carter. It was a you different know? feeling. Everybody different was horny feeling. for Aaron Carter. He put out that movie. <laughs> that sure. he put out that video. I want candy. Yeah, I was just gonna say when he was singing to that girl, Candy. I was also horny for that Ethan character with the long hair. Which oh now makes yeah, sense. of course. Yeah. The hot guy in the, in Hillary in Lizzie McGuire. Yeah, Ethan. like he's who everybody Ethan, Ethan McCraft. To be. Yeah, Ethan Craft. Ethan Craft. His last name was Craft. Right. Like the cheese. Ethan Craft. No, I think so. He definitely had a better last name. That was that's too corny. That guy was too cool. Ethan Craft. Oh, Ethan Craft. That stinks. What if he's the heir to Craft? That's I remember. Cool I remember guy. one that of his lines in the episode not. was like, "He was like, uh, the back of the conditioner bottle tells you you have." To, do you guys remember this? It was the shampoo bottle. A shampoo bottle. Yeah, and he said it says it's rinse and repeat. And they're only saying that because they want you to use more product. And I was like, he's probably right. Yeah. I remember hearing that and being like, and then do you remember when, um, what was the bully girl, Kate? When Kate called Lizzie McGuire an outfit repeater and that, and then no one could wear the same outfit twice. It, it fucking me ruined. For life. It ruined everything. For life, yeah. I liked Kate. I always thought that Kate was like. So cool. So cool. You know who I liked? <laughs> I liked the little brother's blonde friend. She had like white hair and she was like really bad. There was a little while when you said I don't I don't remember him, but there was a little while where I wanted to fuck Simon from Seventh Heaven. Oh, <laughs> the way I wanted to fuck everyone on Seventh Heaven, <laughs> especially the dad. No. Who probably would have fucked me. Yo, you had a shot. You. Right. Yeah. No, I just wanted to fuck Simon. Oh wait, no, you didn't have a shot. Wasn't he wasn't he fucking dudes? Like no, young, he young like kids. boys? Yeah, but young oh, boys though. I had a short haircut. <laughs> you know. <laughs> damn. I mean, not that it's it's obviously awful when young girls get uh, molested, but it's mm, like for young pull boys. Up the family. For young boys, it's butt stuff. That sounds awful. Yeah. Alex, the crush I had on Simon. Oh, I wanted to fuck I want, I mean, Simon. To, if, uh, if, Simon's if, really young in so, this. So, <laughs> just so you guys know, but Simon's bottom left, and I wanted to fuck him there. <laughs> I remember being a tr like sexually attracted to that boy. In well, my eyes, he's still so cute. Like I remember having a crush on him. So there were That's a few fair. seasons of this show where his girlfriend character was um, Ashley Simpson, and she, oh yeah, and she was getting abused by it, her father. Yes, and the way that I hated her, I was like, she's not hot enough for him. Like I can't believe that he's with her through like three seasons now. Like the writers are fucking up. Seventh Heaven was so good. Seventh Heaven was pretty good. Can we watch a dramatic clip of Seventh Heaven? Is there anything like... Oh, dude, like... the joint. The joint. Yeah, the joint. Just please, God. The that's the is, best that's thing the ever. I was thinking. I, yeah, there's so... We I mean... found a joint. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. I like the one where Lucy drops the tampon in front of the guy she has a crush on, and it just ruins her whole fucking day. And, and and it always ended up like they were going to a school dance and the kids accidentally robbed a bank. Like it was like <laughs> and they were like, well, we must go get forgiven by father. It was all very weird. In a certain season of that show, they literally got so bored of doing things with Lucy that we're like, you know what? We're just going to put her character on bed rest for seven episodes <laughs> while she's having her baby. She'll literally just lie there for seven episodes and complain that she wants to go out. Yeah. It was, I hated it. Yeah. 
Uh, I fucking God. Remember when they smoked cigarettes? Yes. No. And they were throwing up. Yeah. Simon and Simon Lucy. and, and, uh, and Ruthie. Ruthie. Yeah. I don't remember this at all. Ruthie was the cutest. This was like Ruthie was cute. The problem I had with this show was like every episode was a very special episode. Like it was just <laughs> morality tales every yes. week. Like get out of here, Yeah, because the dad was a pastor. Yeah. Like it was honestly, he had a homily every week too, right? That like, he had a what? I, like because he the would pop- have to go talk in church. Yeah. Like, oh, I, yeah. So like his speech in church would always tie in. It's like this is a lame It TV always had to do with the, what the episode was. Yeah. It was like sometimes Christ points a gun at us and it hits our shoulder. <laughs> He's like in a shoulder cast. He's like sometimes he points us to our families. Oh. I um didn't even put together the connection between him being a pedophile and a pastor on the show. Oh, shit. He's really playing into it. That's it, dude. He just went, he went meta. Like, he just got too into the character. Like, I yeah. am this now. <laughs> How funny would it be if that's what he pleads? Here we go, look. All right, I'll, I'll get straight to the point. I found marijuana in the house. <laughs> <laughs> and while I never thought of myself as the type of father who'd have to drug test his kids, I'm willing to do just that nope. if that's what it takes to find out who brought a joint into this house. <laughs> <laughs> Dad, Lucy found something, too. Dad, I found a joint in Mom's chest drawer. <gasps> I was just. Oh, uh, whoever did this! I love the great. music. Because I needed something else to go with my outfit. I didn't think you'd mind. But then I stumbled. She sold out her mom. Mary and I didn't know what to think. I mean, it's really none of our business if you and Dad want to. Don't finish that sentence. Don't you ever I say it. Assume you're referring to this. Destroy. <laughs> <laughs> so, wait, pause. Hold on, pause. What the <laughs> fuck is going on here? This is the most intense thing I've ever seen in my life. I was hooked on this show. He I would goes, come home after school and be like, I get so horny watching this show. How this girl <laughs> sold out her mother, who probably just wanted to hit a joint, maybe. And, and her, even if it's not that, in her <laughs> head. So this was like the thing where it's like they, they were teaching you every single lesson along the way. So what they're doing in this scene is she found the joint in the mom's cupboard or right. whatever. Like I the don't mom's... remember it being the mom's joint. It wasn't it's the not. mom's We're joint. We're about to find out okay. whose damn joint it is. Right. So she, don't spoil it. I'm not spoiling it, right? So she finds it and she was going to question the whole family. But the whole point is the little girl found it and she was willing to rat out her own mom to the family oh. to keep everyone accountable. Those are good So, like, children. they needed to give her something to do for that episode I and lo- it was the moral <laughs> dilemma of do I rat out my mom? I love that Mary always had to be sporty, so she always needed a basketball in her hand. <laughs> she's like, she sitting was getting... on the couch at, at a family <laughs> meeting <laughs> <laughs> with ready, a basketball on her lap. Ready to ball. She's ready to do some She's layups, just a bro. guy's gal. She can't help it. <laughs> Who wants to play horse after this? <laughs> <laughs> she was Front so door. belligerently hot Same at this point, they had to. Wait a minute. Then who's joint is it? <laughs> <laughs> they gave Simon the line. <laughs> Mary's like, I can't. I work out. That's my man. He was always the hottest because he was the bad one. You gotta be kidding. <laughs> <laughs> man, I can't believe you. This music's great. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Who edited this? <laughs> Who did this? <laughs> this is the best thing ever. Wow, that was incredible. Oh man, that was so good. That honestly couldn't have ended any better. It, that just reminded me though, they really did build up some drama in that show. Like I would be like hanging on, like drooling, watching the television and getting wet for some reason. I'd be like, well, Lucy has been on AOL Instant Messenger with this guy who's really 50 (laughs) for a while and I need to know if she's going to meet up with him and possibly get trapped in this bathroom like other TV shows. Yeah, it was serious drama. Do you remember the episode where um, where Mary got a a tattoo secretly? Oh, of course. I remember when Mary started being bad. Yeah, no. That was a good time. When Mary turned. They went there with her? Oh, yeah. Wait. Remember when Simon started having sex? With Cecilia? Yes. Yeah. Wow. Well, I remember there was specifically an episode where Simon- did she get pregnant? Simon and one of his girlfriends would be like making out in their 
bedroom and like that every scene with them would open with them just like passionately making out as like 14 year olds yes and i was like that it that ignited it for me baby dude the fact that simon was out there because that, that's what they he had yeah. Ryder Strong syndrome. He That's did. what they did with Ryder Strong. They would open the scenes with him making out with a girl. And you're like, you know what? what? The fuck? I want to fuck him too. I wanted to fuck Ryder Strong and I want to fuck Simon and I want to fuck the guy from the 13th year and I am not ashamed. I'm with you on two of those three fronts, <laughs> sister. You're going to take two or three you know, of the charges with me? You know, the problem is I didn't grow up with the guy from the 13th year. So if I did just latch on to that opinion it would be weird at this point but simon who the hell is the guy from the 13th year <laughs> and how the hell are you comparing him to Ryder fucking strong well he have is, some self respect he Kim. he was the noah beck of my time listen the who for me it noah would be beck. it would be like fuck simon marry Ryder strong kill 13th year yeah, that fuck Simon. That yeah, you're putting that kid. So cute. No, come on. No, Can't. he looks like Noah Beck. You could see why adult me isn't into that. This rant. is wild. Well, because you didn't Alex, have a crush on him were, as a child. You have an issue. No. Yeah, no, he's just he not different. I don't think I would have gone for that. I think. I think. Here's the thing. I like I that think... jawline situation. You know, with Ryder Strong. Dude, and... the picture you sent me of Ryder Strong, I need to delete it off my phone. <laughs> Kim she and sent I... me a picture of Ryder Strong. He looks so good. He's like 15, maybe. <laughs> maybe 12 in it. Okay. Have... He looks so fucking good in that picture. So, Can you pull up pictures of Ryder Strong? I'll tell you which I one it is from here. I want to show you which one Francis. it is. Hold on. It's if you don't really think I can good. point it out from here, you're fucking insane. Young. Yep, right by the word <laughs> young. <laughs> Yes, it's, it's the first one, obviously. How many times it's the have first you one? Is it really Ryder the first it's one? In, yeah, it's the first one that comes up. It's actually the most insane thing I've ever seen. He looks so good there. It's that crazy. is my crush. That That's haircut, my childhood crush. That haircut is your ideal, Sean? That's crazy. Yeah. <clears throat> How would you have him? But Mike? they always open the scenes with him making out, right? Yeah. Yeah, but we're talking about, no, dude, college years, Ryder Strong is the hottest Ryder Strong. You're insane. I don't know, you're, man. You're telling me. Because, like, by the college. Put in college year, Ryder Strong. Yeah. By the time and he let's had have his... this snooze fest. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. Let's see. It's it. not the same. Let's dude. See it. Are you kidding me? I'm sorry, but 13-year-old Ryder Strong is harder. <laughs> over 17-year-old Ryder Strong. Are you kidding let's me? see it. Let's see it. Let's see. He's like no. He's fine there. He's fine. Go back to the other one. Can we pull can we do a side by side? Is that possible? Here, if you, even if we just flip back and forth. <laughs> that other one that, was yeah, You're really going to go with that. the 12-year-old over He's not 12 there. He's probably 15 there and no. like 18 in the other. Is he 15? I don't know. I mean, there's okay there. Yeah, the forehead's there, a problem. Look how young God he looks. There. He looks yeah. very young there. But he I didn't realize how big his forehead was. That's crazy. That hair was doing him favors. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah, it's the forehead being hit. When he for went me. for the long hair, it really did kind of set him back. I liked his little gap tooth, which I feel like um, he fixed over time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember old Righty. <laughs> <laughs> Old righty. So, have you guys talked about this? Did you know the the redhead, uh, who was the roommate in uh, college, Matlin Ward, yeah. is now doing full on porn, like with Black dot com penetration, full penetration. Wait, redhead from Girl Meets Cock. Girl Meets <laughs> Cock. <laughs> the um. Okay, uh. remember Sean got the apartment with his brother. Yeah, that hot brother. Yeah, Honestly, yeah, yeah. Joey Lawrence came the through. The kid from Mrs. Doubtfire. Can you look up Redhead from Boy Meets World? Matlin Ward. Um, but I want to see him in Boy Meets World before we see him in the porn. No, this is the no, this is her. The, a chick. Oh, the tall, skinny redhead. Yes. Yes, I remember her. She's in porn. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, I remember her. Let's I see. always had a giant crush on her because of the uh there was oh, wow. there was one episode where I think Eric took a picture like she had like sent him a nude when they were dating sent Joey Lawrence a nude while they were dating right. and Eric took it and like blew it up and made it like a background 
Oh, like, yes. And it was like, I was like, that is such a devious and horrible prank. Yes, I remember that. I don't remember that one. Oh, man. Yeah, and it I wasn't owned very nice. The DVD box set of that show, thank you. Oh, my God. How many times would you actually watch a DVD box set if you owned it back in the day? Do you know how often I still watch Boy Meets World? Oh, yeah. I mean, if it's on reruns no. on anything, I'm too watching often. it. Yeah? Too often. I don't know. What's too often? A couple times a week. Yeah? I don't think that's too often. I think What's that's a regular ass amount. What's your favorite episode? <sighs> I like the Corey and Topanga's first kiss episode, season one, episode four. That's a good one. I don't know. They're all really good. I really like a lot of the episodes. I like when they get corny, too. Like right. I like their Halloween episodes when someone goes missing. It's really funny. I like that, too. <laughs> I just want to prove how like mildly autistic I am. Frank, I'm pretty sure that Corey and Topanga's first kiss is in season one, episode four. Can you look that up? <laughs> Ooh. They start they kissed four episodes in. One peck. Huh. It was sweet. It was cute. Her hair was crimped. Her hair was crimped as fuck. I remember that. Yes. Oh my god. How do I remember that? I don't know. If it's season one, episode four, I should kill myself later. Because <laughs> that's it's like I have so many other things to con to use my memory for. Right. Anyways, I love it's Topanga. funny watching Frank, a grown man, just being on a Corey and Topanic fandom site <laughs> with like a picture of the crew in the background. He's just looking up information. This is a he gets a paycheck for this. <laughs> Back when uh, when Harrington first signed into. Wow. Fucking crazy. Yes. That is insane. I haven't watched well the show in years. Done. That's just how obsessed I was. Um when Harrington first signed into YouTube on the Gas Digital Lounge television, some of us started like trying to fuck with his algorithm a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> and oh, that's so funny. So we would like to, we would watch, we would just make it run. We'd be doing recording shows and letting it run through a JoJo Siwa video <sighs> playlist. That's great. And a Dance Mom. I love that. Uh, toddlers and Tiaras. I love that. Anything we could. All right. So jokes on you guys. Uh, I have a guest account on my Xbox, which is the only place I ever watch YouTube, uh, and it knows me better than any person on the planet. The algorithm. The algorithm does, and it's totally safe from the tainted thing you guys have done with the Office Lounge Mike Harrington YouTube account. Man, that sucks. Yeah. Man, you had to break that to me on air. Dude, I am I couldn't I I there's no way I could live. If I just let Zach Amigo, you, Frank, Irish just decide what the algorithm wants to show me, that would haunt my nightmares. No, it wouldn't. Who cares? No, my listen. What kind of weakling gets nervous about their algorithm getting scrambled? Me, me, 100%. I Why? Need to, because I have routines. I am so Harrington. wildly set in my ways, Like, Kim. I've never seen you with a routine ever. You don't you have a routine. for four months. <laughs> you leave without keys constantly. I, what, you what, don't what have a Can routine. Can you tell me what your routine is? Yeah, Please? Yeah. Uh, just a, what, a day in the life of Mike. Okay. Well, uh, depends on the day. But right. most of the time, I wake up at about 10 a.m., uh, go into uh, the studio, uh, ready to train. If it's a Monday, Wednesday, Hold or on, Friday, I'm gonna call bullshit on waking up at 10 a.m. every day already. Okay, I I am because the last time that you were scheduled to do this podcast, it was for like two. Okay, and you slept through it. Okay, that was a particularly bad week where I hadn't been sleeping much, and I'm very sorry about that. Sounds we're never like, gonna bring that up again. Sounds like you were off your routine. I was. Right, so my thing is like I crave structure because the more structure I have, the better I'm done. I do. Harrington don't can't crave. come on a podcast saying he craves structure. You don't crave do. structure. A hundred percent. No, ah. Mike. Every day you're like, let's just like walk over to like the West Side Park and throw a frisbee for a few hours. Every day you're the most spontaneous person I've ever met. Every in my life. day he's in the group chat trying to put together a frisbee game. I've never seen a man more available to play frisbee in a park. I mean, he... <laughs> you make time for what you love, Kim. <laughs> he just last week walked me to a place that, like saying it was eight blocks away that was like 12 blocks no, away. No, no. And when we got there, it was closed. That we had to just spice? come back. Okay, I said it was... Was that part of your routine? I said it was six blocks away, okay? We walked seven total, 
and found out that it was actually five blocks <laughs> When away. he says he craves structure, he just meant seeing more buildings. <laughs> 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 uh no i i you're the worst i um yeah i so if i wake up and i make it to training that day then i come back i usually have shows in the <laughs> afternoon the way, that, the way that i've seen him rushing to something last minute almost every day that i've known no. him he craves structure yeah I've built it in where like I have a schedule where it's like, all right, it's set times. I need to be at certain places. And between we that. We were late to your show. Uh, what are you talking about? We, when we were at the park that day playing Frisbee. I we, hate to say it. Were we late? <laughs> no, was, we were like there at the exact time. Like Mike was. But it's, you have to be early for a show. It's you're your missing show. the point. I threw a birthday party for Mike that day and he was two hours <laughs> late to his own party. Okay. Well, that's not really my fault. All right, all right, but anyways, anyways. Tell us structure, <laughs> craving, craving. So the more I fill my week right with shows at scheduled times, right, then I have to. I know I have to be at certain places at these times um, and get these things done. It means I have certain amount of free time outside of that needs to then be dedicated to that. So I block that off in my head, right, and then. It makes it easier to structure my free time because it's like, oh, now I know where the actual gaps are and I can go have fun during that. Whereas like it used to be like I'm so anxious over getting work done all the time that I never schedule fun. You know what I mean? Sure. Yeah. You lost me. I mean, uh, I, yeah, when you said blocking things off in your head, I just pictured like a wall between your thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> and you honestly did lose me there. I'm so no, I have a good mental calendar. Okay, yeah. that's true. Do you, you do know when we put on Jeopardy, you do know Harrington's Jeopardy ways all the Jeopardy answers. But now I feel like you just watched a lot of Jeopardy and you memorize the episodes. <laughs> no, <laughs> I feel, which I, would be smart still. That I mean, would be that would be what that Rain would be. Man, yeah, yeah. No, I'm not that level of autistic. But like it, it is like a. Um, it's a thing where the writing of the questions are, they, they kind of do give you the answer in it. You know what I mean? It's just weird because I've never seen you read anything. Um, I When's don't know. the last time you read a book? Probably Ready Player One like three years ago at this point. Hmm. It's crazy because is... you know so many facts. You know so many facts. I mean, I haven't read a book in about the same amount of time, but I don't know nearly. I haven't read a book in a good fact rate. year and a half, two years. So what, I, what I've kind of done is I've replaced reading with like uh, subjects that I'm really interested in. I go and listen to a podcast by somebody who's like engaging and can talk a bit on a subject. And it's like, I don't know, for whatever reason... Uh, I like slumdog millionaire my way into knowing the answers to trivia questions because of it. You know what I mean? Like you just listen to so many podcasts. We're pretty much on yeah. Jeopardy one day. Yeah, I don't know. I always blow the. Uh, I always blow like the trial. Do you have like uh have, like performance anxiety with exams? Um, not really. No, I'm actually like a really good test taker, which is why it's really frustrating because it's like I don't know. I feel like you got to get like twenty of twenty right, and as soon as I blow one, I get disheartened. You mm. find out that you got one wrong along the way? No, but I, you kind of know. You know what I mean? It's like if I'm just totally guessing at one, then I'm going to like... Right. You're going to assume it's wrong. Yeah. Um. Well, maybe if they have like a... like a spe You know how they do like student Jeopardy or like college Jeopardy? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If they do like a special Jeopardy, you can do it. Yeah, special maybe, Jeopardy? Maybe yeah. if they do a special podcast Jeopardy where they... <laughs> Went on people that worked at Gas Digital on the Jeopardy, and they do special. They even generate special categories for you know things that you guys talk about. Yeah. All right, Alex. This is. Can this be my next birthday? <laughs> We're gonna fake Jeopardy for you. Yeah. Can you just please stage? Can you please produce an episode of Jeopardy, Gas Digital Jeopardy? Yeah, I probably could. That'd be so fun. Things that would be bad for turtles and Harrington. <laughs> it's like. Blowing water into a girl's butthole for 300. <laughs> Plastic straws. Uh, Plastic straws. Uh, sorry, what is? Plastic <laughs> straws. <laughs> oh, uh, man. Yeah. Mm. That would be fun. Yeah. I am. Um, I don't know. I just wanted to, to. I don't know. I want to nerd out for a second and just thank you both for having me on because I love you both so much. 
I'm so happy that you're in town, Kim. Is this a manifesto? Kind of, a little I, bit. Check his pockets, quick. You know, it's like I've <laughs> you don't have the time on my podcast. A roller coaster of emotions in the first second because the second that I realized he was being sincere, I felt like that was very sweet, and then I got immediately nervous that it was going to go on for too long and that I'd get <laughs> uncomfortable. And those nerves made me uncomfortable. Then, but now I'm back. I'm, I'm back. back. I'm back. Tell us you love. Tell us, us how much. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, no, no. Like, I see, here's the thing. I've seen you overload on compliments, Kim, and it's like, I don't know, you can overdose. I've seen you overdose on, like, love and affection before. I think I've never taken too much. <laughs> I've never seen her take too much. I've never seen her take too much once. Yeah? <laughs> she, she literally had four gas digital employees massaging <laughs> all of her limbs the other day. Oh, uh, yeah. I like when you guys give me the six hand massage. I you do. didn't have a team. We were working on you. Like, no massage ever feels good as six hands at the same time. I do give Alex my thighs just to keep it. The other fair. day, Kim lied on her stomach and she she imagined a stretch in her head. She was like, "What if you sat on my back <laughs> with your legs in this going in the same direction as my legs and then you just gently with your heels pushed down on my butt so that the bottom of my back would flatten out and I'll tell you I almost broke the girl <laughs> it wasn't what I thought it was gonna be she was hurt wait no I remember this you were just pushing on her butt yeah that's what she told me to do what did you think that was gonna accomplish straighten the spine what flatten her out yeah i just needed to be i need to be like i want to be crushed between <laughs> two walls just to the point where i could continue breathing i couldn't trust the machine i'll tell you that <laughs> oh man. what if it was like like a human like human like a person could crank it and like stop well, could the person be my mother? <laughs> it's the only person I'm trusting with that damn crank. You wouldn't trust me with the crank? Yes, I'd trust you with the crank. I would crank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Crank you. Yeah. Crank you, thank you. <laughs> okay. I feel like you could get that. <laughs> you could get uh, closing not walls. All great. Yeah, I feel like that's like a medieval torture machine, for sure, right? Where it's like just a hand crank. That it, like pushes two things together mm. to the point of like crushing someone, and somebody has to have remade it. I want to be half medieval tortured. You know what they right? should? Yeah, someone like drawn, should, but not someone should make a a museum where you get med medieval torture, but everything feels good. That's yeah, like half medieval torture. Yeah, like I would do get in the rack. You know how good it would feel to get stretched by the Stretch, rack just yeah, a just, little bit? Just a little bit. Oh, they, yeah. How about this? They put a bucket on your stomach full of rats, but instead of putting, put, making the rats bite you, they just lick your belly. Oh, <laughs> that sounds <laughs> good. Rats. And it like a tickle it torture. It tickles a little bit. Oh, that's so sweet. Or bunnies. It could be bunnies that are sniffing your belly. Like little tiny ones? Yeah. That'd like be pretty that. cool. I obviously like being like drawn, but not quartered. Like the horse is just... Mm. Lie down one foot away <laughs> from mm. the comfort zone. I, that's but crazy. The, all the people that around you have to be dressed like you're going to torture, like, go, yeah. And there's like a fake horse sound. It's like, if I could it's like never. slowly cranks you. Dude, to trust a horse? No, but we, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be on step? a real horse. It wouldn't oh, be okay. on a real horse. No. I would never trust a horse. <laughs> no, you can't trust the horse. Oh my God. That gave me Can so you imagine? Much anxiety. I was Can like, you imagine what? trusting a horse not to run? No, that would be so great. Dude. We're like, doing it in the gas digital backyard. Suddenly, Lewis comes in in a hurry. He's like, I'm fucking pissed. And the horse jumps. <laughs> Alex is splitting it into four pieces. <laughs> I was picturing this could happen like at a spa type situation. <laughs> uh, uh, I like, thought it gas. No. Like even maybe just like on a nice open field with flowers, like the like no. the sound of music. In this room. We're, gonna we're doing torture. Horses. We're doing nothing. In a torture chamber. Room. Yeah. Half yeah. torture. Sounds nice. Half torture. Yo, half. I think I would book tickets for half torture. Yeah. Yeah. That's a fun weekend getaway. You know they have that haunted house that if you get through it, you get like ten thousand dollars. Is that real? Yeah. We should do that. You and I. But no, it's like really bad. They Kim. like can physically touch you. They can put you in a box. They lock you in it for like twenty minutes. Okay, but like eventually you got to get out though. Are you allowed to fight them? Like, how does that work? I, can you look up haunted house that pays you to survive? Yeah, because it's like, <laughs> yo, if I was a trained MMA fighter, I guess a lot of people don't do it. If I was a trained MMA fighter and I could just go through there At and one like point they knock take out you, everybody, they throw you in a bathtub full of cold water. Okay, this sounds awesome. 
Harrington's hard. No, 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 no. So like I do, I don't know. I've done like Tough Mudders before and it kind of sounds like an indoor like we're just going to force you through all the Tough Mudder obstacles. I wonder if that's real that it, they really paid you. I feel like it's going to be a thing where they will physically try to stop you from making it through the end. And like if that's that a thing. That's dangerous though. Yeah, that's like a sounds, lawsuit. Yeah. I, I feel like you're definitely going to need to sign some insane waiver to go through that thing. But 10 grand at the end? Yeah, and right. A, and a little scare. What couldn't I do for 10 grand? I don't know. Did you see anything about it, Francis? Does it exist? Yeah, it's called McCamey Manor. Your, your, your mic's off. Not on. I think it might be the connection. It's called McCamey Manor. Mm. McCamey. Where is it? It is a $20,000 reward if you make it through. How long is it? It's in uh, San Diego. How long is it? It can last up to eight hours. I mean, that's not that bad. You have to sign a liability waiver to participate. I think they've had a bunch of lawsuits and like. Has anybody successfully claimed it? People trying to sue, saying they were like attacked or tortured or whatever. Fine, but has anybody successfully <laughs> so completed fine. the eight-hour thing and gotten the reward? I don't think so. All right, there's got to be a gimmick. They there. actually molest you in it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and you have to turn around, and then they're like, what? It was a scary haunted house. You imagine that. And they fuck with you. Something <laughs> terrible has to happen that it people says, are... Um, the newest iteration is a 10-hour experience called Desolation, and it offers a prize of 20000 but it deducts 500 from the prize for every failed challenge or every use of profanity. Oh, so you if can't if curse in there? You and you say, oh, fuck, there goes 500 all right, that's kind of tight. I could train myself out of cursing for the night. I, I think could just I could. scream. Yeah. But it's 10 hours of jump scares and torture. 10 hours of so No food? $500 per curse? That's a Did it? Does a zombie job. come out in the middle of the thing and give you like a sandwich for a minute so you can... <laughs> what if you need to shit? Like, I have so many questions. What if you're on your period? You're like, I need to change my tampon. Can we pause? Maybe that's part of the experience. There's just piss and shit in the corners by the end of the day because people have been... A few people have said they used the safe word and the employees didn't honor it and they just kept torturing them. All right, that sounds like a fucking nightmare. Yeah. Oh, that's a great it movie. Like a Rob Zombie movie. It, yeah. It reminds me of like Action Park, like just something that absolutely shouldn't be legally happening anywhere. There yet. should be a camera in there where the CIA they're, is watching. Yeah, they're just selling tickets, being like, it's fun. Right. Dude, a gang of marauding meth addicts comes through and kills the actual staff when a new group comes in to try for the day. And they're like, all right. And like they keep trying to use the safe word and they realize that like, oh, these guys are actual fucking bloodthirsty killers. Wait, start over. Who's stopping that from happening? Start okay. over. What was the first part of it? I'm that? saying that like a um, like uh, drugged out like methy bikers fucking like the they're out for drinks at a bar one night with like all the people from the people like the staff of this park find out what they do kill them like real quick at the bar and then they run. You know what I mean? Like they mm. take the money the from the next group of tourists that come in like and then a haunted torture house. them to death. Mm. So yeah. seeing murders in there would be like, oh, that was really realistic. Yeah. Mm. Nobody's, yeah, those, like the employees aren't even safe. Yeah. And it's like you don't, and, and people and the thing slowly is, start to realize. It's a haunted house, but it's one that they can carry around. So they just take the bodies with them. They take the bodies with them. <laughs> Yo, I actually, I went to this one Eastern State Penitentiary uh, with a group of friends in Philadelphia. It was so fun. Uh, it was in like this old abandoned prison and they had like a bunch of uh, different like secret passages. Mm. And at one point I they was like- a haunted house in the prison? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. That's really it's cool. It's so cool. We should go next year. I would love to go next year. Yeah. That um, sounds great. Yeah. So like I was playing along with like every single scare along the way and they, they were- uh, they were really cool to me. So at the end, uh, they like when I was separated from my group, they grabbed me, pulled me aside, and like dragged me into one of the secret passages. They're like, "All right, we're gonna let you fuck up your friends this next time around." And they put me to the spot where my friends were about to come out, and I got to be the one to jump out and be like, "Oh, got your motherfuckers!" Oh, that's fun. Oh, uh, it was so fun. That's cool. Yeah, this like the the staff at places like that can be really really cool. 
you got you went through a haunted house and got hired on the spot. You're telling me, kind of, yeah. They, <laughs> you didn't even. <laughs> uh, I became a scam. <laughs> They're like, you know what? You belong with us. Stay in here. I do have strong carny energy. <laughs> carny That's energy. so funny because I was just picturing you like operating a ride at Six Flags. Like I feel like that would be a good job for you too. I'm so mad. I never had that job. I worked at Blockbuster when I was there a teenager. There are dicks but... at Six Flags. Yeah. They're... Yo. Well, because they're all just like 17 year olds with their first job ever, and it's like a cool one. And they, they think they have power over you because they could throw you off a ride. Well, the thing is that Six Flags, they're so crazy about the cell phones. And the people like really search you like fucking TSA. Like they finger uh, your asshole to find your cell phone, and they're like, I think there's something in there. And it's like, no. <laughs> and there is. I have to poop later. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and like, it's crazy. All right, to be fair. Right, it's a natural instinct for somebody in an Instagram culture to want to take a selfie of themselves at the top of a roller coaster. I've never not done that, right? Even uh, today at Six Flags, I did that <laughs> after he threatened me. I pulled it out and I p took a video. So it's like, if you don't pull that phone back fast enough, right? That is a real problem for somebody in the back row in Florida. They let me just keep it on my wrist, yeah. She said, well, because Kim had it double hooked around her wrist and she, the girl asked her to take it off and we struggled with it for like a good minute where we were like, it's not coming off. And she was like, all right. <laughs> and it could have just broken it off. It could have just broken. It's just like face. a little piece of leather. Yeah. Well, that's chill. Yeah. I like that. That seems like that. that is the, you know, Florida it's common law, sense. man. It's common sense. It's just Florida law you know, is different. That's what Florida's known for, common yeah. sense. They dude, like to... freedom state. It's I just love like, it. take your chances. You're here in Florida. I love it, dude. Take your chances. Yeah, and nothing happened. We actually got a really good uh, show intro out of it. Yep. Yeah. Um, all right. I did want to bring one thing up to you. Um I was talking during one of those Florida episodes. Oh, fuck. What? My parking's in 10 minutes. Okay. That's all right. I'll have to move it. Right. What are we at? Okay. All right. Okay. I want to hear Harrington out. No. Oh, look how dejected. I'm sorry. I to get a oh, you got 10 Ta minutes. Okay. I was talking to some of the, of the broad topics heads in the chat okay. during one of the Florida episodes, and a bunch of them have made a commitment uh, to getting as hot as humanly possible by Skankfest in us? November. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They 100% just want to simp out as hard as possible at Skankfest. I said it might be a little creepy uh, if a bunch of shirtless dudes showed up uh, for broad topics. But... Well, not we, if they have abs. Well, yeah? we can hold a contest, the fan that gets the hottest. Like, yeah, they ha it has to be a real transformation, like video proof. Okay. But let's get more into it later. Yeah, I like that. But I fucking love that. Okay. I think that's great. Cool, cool, cool. Harrington, thank you so much for coming on our show. Thank you for having me. We love you, Mike. We I love, love you. you so much. I love you all so much. Is there anything you want to plug? Um, yeah. Uh, check out Notes of a Goon uh, with Chris from Brooklyn every Tuesday at midnight on iTunes, Spotify, everywhere you find podcasts. And I'm um, booking for Old Man Hustle now. So head on over there, catch a show. Uh, it's a really fun club. Uh, you guys can follow me on Twitter at Kimberly Congdon on Instagram at Kim Congdon. Check out my Twitch, twitch.tv slash Queen Kong One. Alex? Uh, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at I am Alex Scar and head to gasdigitalnetwork.com where you can use promo code TOPICS, T O P I X, for a seven day free trial with access to every episode of this show and every other show on the network on demand, bonus content, live chats, and more. It's really dope. Uh, go do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys. Thank you so much for listening. Thanks for listening. Thanks to uh, Joey and Ani from Too Much Content Studio for having us. This place is so dope, and uh, we appreciate them so much. Mm -hmm. You guys, we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Hey, everyone. Before we go, if you enjoy this podcast, you might enjoy some of the other podcasts available on gasdigitalnetwork.com. This week, we're highlighting the House of Hardcore podcast hosted by ECW legend Tommy Dreamer. You could find the full catalog of episodes on demand at gasdigitalnetwork.com or catch the latest 15 episodes anywhere you find podcasts. Here's a clip. We're talking yes. shop. We're talking anything. Rocky Romero.
Carl what? Anderson and Big LG Doc Gallows. He's got so many names I forget. I have him in my phone. So many different names. Well, well, let's go. Let's be honest. This is the House of Hardcore podcast. I'm a House of Hardcore original on the first show. Big XLG under one of my many 37 monikers. We forgot get about to Big XLG. Big XLG, brother. Tommy <laughs> gave me that name. We got to get to the House of Hardcore one of these days. Ooh, yeah, absolutely. We almost, we almost did when we were running hot in Japan with Bullet Club. I think weren't we? Didn't we almost? Yeah, but I, I think we, we couldn't. We, we couldn't schedule it. Yeah. COVID kind of killed that whole house of hardcore dream <laughs> and something else we'll talk about. Uh, COVID killed a lot of things. <laughs> it's, <Yeah. laughs> it's it's fucked, man. When, you know, we all grew up loving pro wrestling. And if you think about the absurdness of actually pro wrestling, <laughs> here is I'm the world heavyweight champion. I have a very expensive suit. Another man comes in, rips up my suit, and now we're going to fight till the death. <laughs> my suit. Yeah. Um, or even like, I hate you so much. I'm going to shave your head, brother. <laughs> or how about, I hate you so much. I'm going to cut your nutsack off and eat it. Wow. I mean, that's the kind of thing. <laughs> You're taking it to the extreme. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the good thing about talking shop mania too, right? Is like, we got all this fake stuff on there and it's all unreal. It's all scripted. It's all not real. But then we have roll undershed, which is the real aspect of the fight. Yeah, this yeah, is, yeah, that's, that's the real part. That, that's, right. that's what I'm excited. Right. About. They're not, they're not shoot fights. They're hoot fights. It's our answer yeah. to roll underground. It's the same thing. When you see a faction like retro Poopshin make their debut, there's going to be three <laughs> factions debuting on this thing. I mean, it's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger all the time. And that's what makes it so exciting and so much fun. And to have people like Tommy dreamer and Rhino and just incredible, in the roll under shed. Fuck. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a backyard wrestling kids wet dream right there. You know, I would have booked that all day long. in oh 1998. God. Can you imagine? There's a, who's, there's a who's who here, man. I mean, like you just, yeah. just saying those three is good enough to just great. get great. I, I was such an ECW Mark, dude. I used to, yeah. I, I would get it through like UHF or V like some weird channel. So I, I would like have to hold the bunny ears and then like, go in my room and like stand like this. And then I'd watch from like so far away as like super fuzzy, but I've like loved every second of it. I had to do that with uh, Florida championship wrestling and that's yeah. what hooked me. Um, if we get to, if this is successful, which I know it will be, cause we're all going to be plugging it on socials. And I know, uh, cause that from my piece that I was there, number one, we'll talk about Rhino going so, so hard <laughs> preparing like it's, a he real almost, match. He almost killed Laser, my my minion brother. I mean, he almost <laughs> cut him literally in half. I was losing my Three mind. Times. Here. What Three are you guys times getting frustrated? <laughs> that was the best. And I'm doing alternate commentary because I see a camera and I'm just healing the hell out of him like I normally do. Yeah, um, Rhino was getting frustrated with with the kid he brought. <laughs> <laughs> but I kind of think Rhino was going the. I, I'm not saying it was Rhino's fault because I respect the legend. I just kind of think Rhino was going the wrong way. I think. I, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, it maybe, maybe could have been. Rhino's, Rhino's a particular, particular brother, right? But you know what? Hey, he's a legend. So you know what? It man. wasn't his fault. It was that Le kid's fault. It's the like, oh, fuck yeah, that kid. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. a close line with the left, brother. Remember that. You yeah, know, I I'm, I, I don't mean to put myself over, but I am so uh, ambidextrous. I can DDT from either side. I can <laughs> spear from either side, but apparently the, that's why the spear and the gore are different. It can only happen from one side. <laughs> hey, hey, that's why it's, it's Rhino. Go, I, I think the gore and the spear are different. I, but here's the other thing, guys, that's my backyard. And I filmed some sex Ferguson stuff just for like Patreon out there. And I, I fell down and that's not like, I know There's rocks out there. Precautions. <laughs> There's rocks out there. And I was watching it back because I wasn't here, which we can talk about later. I was driving me nuts, but he's just cutting these brothers in half. And I mean, these aren't world renowned pro wrestlers per se. These are either up and comers or hobbyists, friends of ours. And I'm like, fuck, Rhino's going to kill somebody in my backyard. There's no way so that they hard. signed a waiver. <laughs> hey, well, you could say like in the first, in the, in the, in the boner yard match though, I, I knocked you down and you fell down on a, on a boulder. Right. But he, 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 he no sold it. Cause everybody was around watching. He didn't want to, he didn't want to show any, any pain or tears. He, oh, this, he said he laid there and was going, oh. I couldn't, I couldn't walk for a week. Properly. Like he landed on a, he landed on a rock. That was like a, it was like a, it was like a sword just pierced into my body. <laughs> <laughs> when you uh, get up and you do the old man, you pull up your pants a little bit and you say, I'm right back. I'm right back. I can make a phone call. <laughs> you couldn't even get up. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I heard the one guy when Rhino uh, gored him, he went, huh. <laughs> 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 
Yeah, his life was leaving his body. <laughs> it might have been Rhino, too.